for example, if you purchase a note and, and you purchase it at $50,000, but the property is only worth $30,000. Well, if you have to go in and foreclose, you're not really balancing out. Hi, everybody. My name is Richard. Welcome to A Better Lifestyle. Today's topic, we're going we're gonna to talk about real estate. Uh, if you never heard about note investing, uh, this show is probably going to be uh, interesting and new uh, new stuff that you're going to learn in the, in the real estate world. So uh, my guest is uh, Tanya Brown. So uh, she's been in the, in the real estate for, for quite some time now. So uh, Tanya, please tell everybody who you are, a brief resume of who you are, maybe 90 seconds, two minutes, and then uh, we'll get started. Certainly. Well, thank you so much for having me. My name is Tanya Brown. I am president of the Pier Harbor Group. I have been in real estate off and on for about 12 years. And then maybe about four years ago, I found my niche. And so I did the wholesaling and I did, you know, buy and holds. I had rental properties and I tell everybody I did it the wrong way. I had family and I know you're not supposed to put family in there because they just don't do right. But I did it anyway. And so then it became that that landlord who didn't really want to do buy and holds anymore. You know, I did flipping of houses, but it wasn't until about four years ago, I got into note investing. And then I was able to build a company and build a portfolio of mortgage notes. And so what we are as a private equity firm, we work with, um, we work with professionals who are looking to build wealth through mortgage note investing. So what is mortgage note investing? It is literally the 10,000 foot view is you becoming the bank. And so you, we purchase mortgage notes and we purchase them at a discount, and then we start receiving the monthly payments. So that's the 10,000 foot view. Of course, there's more to it, but we put these notes into people's portfolios so that they can start having passive income come in month after month and build up their portfolios and build their wealth. Great. So that was my first question, what is a note? So you answered that <laughs> already. That's good. So how do you get, if someone wants to get started in uh in that field, how uh, how do they do it? And so there's different ways that you can get into it. A lot of people, we have two different ways. One, we have a training component, and that's for people who actually want to be hands-on. So there are a lot of investors out there who just want to manage their own portfolios. And so they want to you know, find the assets, and they want to work the assets out, and they want to put them into their portfolio themselves. And so for that, we do have a training component in which they can, we show you how to do all of that for yourself, and then we help you get into your first note. The second way is that you can just call us up, come to us and say, listen, these are my goals. These are my investing goals. This is what I'd like to accomplish, whether it's I'm trying to build um I'm trying to build something into my child's education fund. I'm trying to build up my retirement account. And, you know, I don't want it in stocks because the stock market right now is quite volatile. It's always volatile. But this is more of a steady stream of income. And that's what I'm looking to do. So then we talk, we build relationship, and we try to help you reach your goal through these mortgage notes. Okay. Is that because uh, uh, before I pressed the record button, I was saying that I listened to one of the podcasts that you, you did. Is that the first part, uh, uh, GB partnership? Is yes. that what it's called? Okay. Yes, a joint venture par partnership. Yes. So we do joint venture partnerships in which we work with an investor and we just determine how we're going to work it out. We usually do all of the work out of the notes. So if we have to go into foreclosure, if we have to get lawyers, or if we have to get a note to reperform, which means that if we get a note to reperform, we've purchased a delinquent note. And so the borrower has been a not so great borrower. They didn't you know, perform well. They stopped paying essentially. And once they stopped paying, those notes are sometimes sold off. We buy them at a discount, but then our goal is to get them to reperform and to get people back to paying again. So, I mean, yes, we go into that and then we just determine if the partnership, what are you looking for? Are you looking for performing notes, meaning the borrower is paying? Or are you looking for non-performing notes, meaning the borrower is not paying, but you have time and we can work out the note and get it to either reperform or sometimes we have to take the property back and actually, you know, foreclose and then we have an asset that you can either rent or you can put another person in there and turn another note 
or you could just sell off the property. So we work with the investor to find out what their risk tolerance is, and we work with them to find out where they're trying to go. And with that, we try to build a portfolio of notes for them. And that is through a joint venture partnership. Okay. You mentioned uh, non-performing and uh, performing. Can you uh, can you elaborate uh, yes. a little bit again for, uh, sure. for people who don't know? Sure, definitely. So when we purchase mortgage notes, we purchase them from banks, hedge funds, other mortgage um, note investors. We also purchase them from brokers and we usually buy them at a discount. So for example, if you have a mortgage and you purchased it at $200,000 and at $200,000 was the note. That was 10 years ago. You've been paying on it. And then, for example, something went wrong. We don't know what went wrong, but now the mortgage is at $100,000. You've paid it down to $100,000. Now something went wrong. You were hanging Christmas lights and somebody fell off the roof and they, they weren't able to pay anymore. Right. And so they've, they've paid. They stop paying for two, three months because they've been in traction and they're, they're laid up and they can't make their payments because they can't work. And so the bank will see it as, OK, they're 30 days late. They're 60 days late. Now they're 90 days late on their mortgage payment. And so we need to go in and foreclose. Sometimes instead of foreclosing, they sell off the loans and they can sell off these loans at like 60 or 70 cents on the dollar, sometimes 50 cents on the dollar. I've, I've even gotten them a little bit cheaper, but we say around 50 to 60 cents on the dollar because it's non-performing. A non-performing note means that the borrower has stopped paying the mortgage. A performing note means that the borrower is a good borrower and they have been paying and they can and they pay consistently. So when you have the non-performing note, you may purchase it at that discount. So you have a hundred thousand dollar note. You buy it at 50 cents on the dollar. You now have 50 a fifty thousand dollar. You purchased a note that's worth one hundred thousand dollars for fifty thousand dollars. The thing is, we have to go back in and may have to pay five thousand, six thousand for a lawyer to foreclose if we have to go that route. But most of the time, what we try to do is keep the borrower in their home. So we, as the small bank, can go in and say, hello, Mr. Borrower, what happened? And they can say, oh, you know, I fell off the roof, the, hanging the Christmas lights, I got far behind, you know, the kids' college tuition was due, I still have health bills to pay, yeah, hospital bills to pay, I still have my keep my lights on, and they just got overwhelmed. And they're saying, I, I didn't know what to do, you know, and so, so they kind of push it to the side and they forget about it. And the bank that and we come in as the small bank and we can say, well, how can we work with you? Instead of saying we have to just go in and foreclose like the big banks, we can say, well, how can we work with you? And then we try to modify the loan and get them back up to speed so that they're back to their regular payments. So not only is it just building wealth for you, because now you have this 50,000 note on a house that's probably worth one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars dollars $200,000, the borrower still owes you that $100,000. So you have the spread between $50,000 and what the note is really worth on top of the interest and any late payments and anything else associated with it. I hope I explained that okay. Was that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if if something people will just have to replay it again. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of information, but uh, but it's good uh, in general because I was listening before. I did a few uh, a few minutes uh, studying a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, the whole the whole process. But it's good the way you explained it, so it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty clear. Okay, good. Um, so, if someone wants to, uh, if uh, once they purchase the note, if someone wants to sell it back to someone else, can they do that? Yes, yes. There is a market for notes that are being sold, and what's good about it is if you purchase a non-performing note. Again, we have a hundred thousand dollar note, but we purchase it for fifty thousand dollars. But then we get it to reperform again. We can actually sell it off at a higher price. So we may be able to sell it off at seventy-five or eighty thousand dollars because there's a market out there for people. But we still have made a profit in there. So yes, there is a market for selling off those notes, and you can do multiple things with with these mortgage notes. But there is a market out there for them. It's not like you get the note and then it just kind of goes stale and you don't know what to do with it. There's a market out there for for all types of notes, bankruptcy notes, foreclosure notes, even just regular performing notes. So if, if someone wants to find, uh, 
find like uh, mortgage notes? How do uh, they do it? They go online or where do they? Uh... They come to us. <laughs> they come to us <laughs> and we can provide them that those resources. But there are some online uh, sources. So there is uh, Notes Direct. There's Paper Stack. Those are some online um, places where they are selling notes off. So it's kind of like an online MLS, if you will. It's the um, like realtor.com or zillow.com okay, okay. is that they have their, they call them trade desks and they have their own little trade desk. People place their assets for sale on there and you can go through and you can actually look through and, and get assets. Okay. What are the risks uh, involved in uh, getting to mortgage notes? That's a great question. I would say the only risk involved is, is buying wrong. And that's like any other type of real estate. So if you don't do your due diligence, if you do not perform your strict underwriting, then you definitely can get in trouble. For example, if you purchase a note and you purchase it at $50,000, but the property is only worth $30,000, well, if you have to go in and foreclose, you're not really balancing out. If you foreclose, you get the property back. The property is only worth $30,000, but your note, you purchased it for $50,000. So it's like anything else. If you don't do your homework on the front end, then you can definitely get in a lot of trouble. Mm. Uh, what is, uh, before you were saying non-performing and performing, can you explain to the people what is uh, first position? first position? Certainly. So we have, and that's all I deal in is first position. So first position is the actual lean position that the note is in. So you can have a first position, you can have second, and believe it or not, there's third and there's fourth position. But think of a first position note as the lean position. So if you are a new homeowner, you go out and you buy your first house and you get your loan from Bank of America, Bank of America is the first lien. So they have the rights, the first rights to come in and foreclose should you default on the loan. So for example, also if a second note, a second lien would be if you got a HELOC, a home equity line of credit or a home equity loan, and you took that out on the house while you still had your first mortgage, that would be your second lien. So you have first position, you have second position. You think of your first position as your main mortgage. That person has the first rights to foreclose and to gain all rights back to that property. The second position falls up under that first position. And you think of that as the HELOC or the home equity loan. And that will be subject to the first. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone, uh, when I was going through uh, your profile, when I was searching <laughs> For, uh, for you did some, your homework, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, when I was searching and I saw real estate, and then I saw mortgage note. I don't know if we have that here in uh, in Canada. I didn't do my homework here. Mm -hmm. But if someone is uh, in another country, let's say I'm in Canada, can I purchase a note from the yes. states? Yes, you certainly can. You absolutely can. And there are people who are purchasing mortgage notes from out that are outside of the United States. But yes, you can. Mm, okay. And now uh, how uh, how is the process for that? Is that different? There must be there must be some it's got to be a little bit uh the only difference process. would be yeah the, the there's not a different process i think the only difference would be uh the dollar value so i think the canadian dollar is 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 a little bit lower right now than the us dollar so i mean you would actually be paying more than what it would be worth in the us but it was just the transfer of the 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 currency i think would be the only but other than that the process is absolutely the same it you would purchase it in an entity and then all the assignments and everything else would be in your name so your company would just purchase those notes okay so what's uh what's the starting point of uh for the capital to uh to invest how much money that someone That's needs to have Great questions. So I tell everybody, if you want to purchase or get into your first note, I would advise for a good solid note around twenty to $25,000. And this is an all cash business. You can't take a loan out from a bank. 
you can take loans from, you know, private lenders or other investors, but you can't go to the bank like you're buying a house and get a loan and wait 30 days and say, oh, the loan is approved. This is a straight cash business. So you have to be ready to move once you make your offer. But you can get into a good note for 20 to 25,000. However, there are things that we call partials in which people will sell off portions of their notes. So they'll send, sell, they'll sell off payments. So for example, if you have a note that's a 30 year mortgage, that's 360 months. And say, for example, you want, you say, I just have 5,000, I have 10,000, but I want to invest it and get a 10 or 12% return. Well, a person can sell off maybe, I don't know, this throwing numbers out, like 50 of those payments that you will now start to receive. And you pay that person that five to $10,000 and you start receiving those 90 payments month after month to get your return. After those 90 payments are over, the other payments go back to the borrower and you can do it again. And so that's a way of it's called um, having a partial or doing a partial on a note. So you're getting partial portions of the payments and you're still making a return on it. And then it goes back to the bar, the original owner when it's finished. Uh, speaking of return, what's the average return on uh when you when you're investing in the, in the I, I like I, the returns are really strong. We always say um, anywhere from ten to twelve percent you can easily get, but we're really seeing upwards of twenty percent in 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 this realm. So you can really do very well, and that's just with performing notes. You can get anywhere from I would say twelve ten to twenty percent, depending on on the asset. But in non-performing, you can really go way above that twenty percent. Mm. Uh, so what's the strategy for someone, let's say they want to get started in, uh, in that area, what would be, uh, a, a great strategy to build a solid, uh, a solid portfolio? Good question. Um, I would say first get educated on it because when I started, I first was able to, you know, when I got into real estate, I could read a book and I could get on, on these, uh, meetups and do everything and talk to people on how to flip a house or how to run my numbers for a buy and hold or how to do those. Those were things I could read about. And I went out and I did. When I found out about note investing, I said, I can get in trouble here because every note is different. And there are people behind these notes and every state has a different law for how you can operate in it. And so when you, when you put all of that together, the first thing you need to do is get educated. So make sure that you have somebody who can educate you about note investing and just the basics. Then get yourself into a mentor or a community of people who understand what it is you're doing because they will have the resources you need to move forward. So if you're investing, we, we invest all across the country and we don't have to go out and drive to every last house, but we have resources, boots on the ground that go out there for us. And if we need to have to board up the house or, or put lock boxes on or winterize, we have people that can actually do that for us. And so we have a team of people across the United States to work. So one, get educated, to get connected and get connected with, with the right people who are doing note investing. And then three, just jump into it, start looking and sourcing for notes. And then once you have that background, that foundation, you'll have somebody, that community to help walk you through. And that's really what we do. I have a meetup every month. We actually meet in person and we actually have an online uh, meetup because we're trying to build community of like-minded note investors who can share resources, share challenges and share anything that's going on. We even do deals in, in here in, in our meetups. And so that way, you know, you have somebody to lean on. And if you're first starting out, you're not just, you know, is am I making the right decision? Am I not making the right decision? Is this a good note? Is it? But you have people who have been there and can help you do it. Okay. Uh, what I forgot to, I'm not sure if I asked before. Did I ask about what are the pros and cons of uh, note no, investing? No, you didn't. Yeah, okay. No, okay. So what, the, <laughs> so what are the pros and cons? So the pros are... There are no toilets, tenants, and termites. So you are not a landlord. You're called what we like to call a lean lord. So you don't have to get, you're not woken up. Woke, you don't get woken up. I'm saying this all wrong. <laughs> they won't wake you up 12 o'clock in, in, the, in the middle of the night to fix your toilets, right? So you're not that. You do have, um, that's one of the benefits. You have very strong returns. It's not like being in the stock market where it's so volatile and it's up and down. 
and you don't have to worry. It's truly passive income, right? And you don't have to worry about contractors and managing contractors if you're flipping. And one benefit too is that you get in on the ground floor. It's you're buying from the bank at a discount and you're buying the balance of the loan. You're not buying at market rates. So we're in a position where we're actually selling to wholesalers and we're selling to flippers because we're getting it cheap. And whereas they're competing with everybody else. And so this is a small, small, but growing community of note investors, but it's really a great position and a great place to be. One of the cons about being in it is that you can buy wrong. That's all I can think of. And, and the thing is, you're the bank, right? And the bank never loses. I mean, no time has anyone said, well, I owe the bank, but I got over on them. But no, you can't because you come and go, you enter into a contract with them and you're bound by that contract. And when you assume that contract as the individual bank or the individual lender, you, you get the same rights. And so the only con is if you buy wrong, if you're not connected and don't have the right people. I mean, there are challenges where you're dealing with lawyers that may not even understand certain things or or they're guiding you the wrong way. Or if you're dealing with servicers who you kind of have to stay on, a servicer is who services the note because we don't interact directly with the borrower. The servicer will interact with the borrower for you. And so we, you might have to stay on your servicer because they may do something quirky. You know, they didn't check for taxes for you or they messed up the escrow. And so you might have to check behind them. But other than that, there are so many more pros than there are cons in in this in this business and what if uh what if the borrower can't pay the note what happens if the borrower didn't pay the note or the first... no, or can't can't pay like you oh, get the note, let's say yeah let's say you get the mortgage notes and then uh, i don't know six months later then there's problems like yep then we go straight through our process we we first try to figure out well what went wrong and can we modify the loan and so if there's a, you know, a reasonable effort to they have a reason that they did not, they weren't able to pay, then we'll work with them. As long as the borrower comes to the table, we're willing to work with them. It's when they stop coming to the table that we have problems. So six months we go and we say, hey, what has happened? If we can modify it, we'll modify the loan to work with them. Otherwise, if they're just, you know, ghosting us and they're not doing anything or maybe even, for example, the person died and the kids are still in the house or the grandkids are in the house or what have you, and they're adult children who just aren't paying, we have to go in and find out what the problem is. So the first thing is to see if we can get it to reperform. The second thing is that we'll ask if they don't acknowledge our, our efforts to get it to reperform, then we ask for a deed in lieu. So we say, hand over the deed, sign over the deed to us. We'll take the property back and then you can go on along your way. And sometimes it's called cash for keys. We'll pay them a month's worth of what, what it would cost for them to rent a place. And we'll give it them and ask them to leave. They can say no. And if they say no, then we go into foreclosure. And once we go into foreclosure, we just follow through and we may have to get the property back. But in going into foreclosure, most people, you'd be surprised at how many people really want to keep their house. And they find the money and we'll start paying you and we'll pay you everything back. So the last resort is always foreclosure. What about the, does uh, interest rates have uh, any effects on mortgage loans or? They, they do on originating them, but as we purchase them, it's not really an impact at all. So for example, when we were just a few months ago, well, like last year, when interest rates were at what three percent, people were just buying up, buying up houses, and and the houses were going quickly, and they were great. Well, now we've got this inflation going on, and rates are like at seven percent, and so the banks are selling off a lot of these two and three percent mortgages because now they can lend at seven percent. So we're starting to see some of those, and they're performing, but you're starting to see some of those two and three percents come into the market and trickle on down. And some of them are OK. It's just that in order to get a nice yield or return on it, those two and three percents have to be really discounted uh, at a nice discount price for us to buy them. But as as the note buyer, it really doesn't impact us, the, inf um, the interest rate or the inflation. Mm. All right. Uh, great, uh, great information. Uh, I really liked uh, 
since I didn't know nothing about the mortgage uh, notes, but I did my homework a little bit before. Uh, you did great. <laughs> before we did, thanks. Before we did, uh, before we did the recording. So, uh, so yeah, so it's good. So I hope for people who uh, had no idea what uh, what is a mortgage notes. I hope uh, it brought some uh, light and some value and uh, some knowledge. So what do you, what would be your last words concerning uh, mortgage notes to everybody? I would say if the, if anyone is interested or wants to learn more, please reach out to me. Uh, you can contact me at info at peerharbor.com. That's P-I-E-R-H-A-R-B-O-R.com. I'm also on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook under Peer Harbor Group, the Peer Harbor Group. But please, you know, let's have a conversation. And if you're interested in getting started, we can get you started. Great. Um, all right. So I'm going to wrap it up uh, like that. Uh, thanks, Tanya, for uh, being here and uh, accepting, my, uh, accepting my accepting uh, my invitation. It was very pleasant to meet you and uh, to talk to you. Uh, so uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, listening and watching to this episode. Welcome to A Better Lifestyle. My guest was Tanya Brown, and uh, we were talking about mortgage notes. So you got all the information uh, she mentioned. So it will be on uh, on the show notes on the podcast and uh, on the video recording. So uh, make sure you check that out. And uh, on that on that note, uh, we'll see you everybody on uh, on the next episode. Bye. Thank Thanks you so much. That. No problem. It was my pleasure.